Hey guys, welcome back. This is the third and final installment of the Mac Pro case repair slash ATX mod. This has been quite a project from fixing the shipping damage a couple of times to hacking a giant hole into the side panel, then painting the entire case. It hasn't been an easy project, but the end is in sight. Today we'll be tying up all the loose ends and getting this case fully built. My first order of business was to get the power supply situation sorted out. I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to use the casing from the factory power supply so that I could mount it and have that clean factory look. The first thing I needed to do was take this power supply apart. This was pretty simple, but I got hung up a couple of times, especially when I couldn't figure out how to get one of the screws out until I realized I needed to poke a hole in this sticker to get to the screw underneath. The plan is to have the normal ATX power supply sit inside the casing of the old one. This would require some modifications to the max power supply's casing. Once the case was empty, I test fit it to see what I would need to do, and it looked like I would need to remove one of the sides so the new power supply could stick out the back a little bit. I started bending it back a little bit to see how strong this aluminum would be, and I was able to just clip the metal and work it back and forth to get it to come out. It came out okay, but I needed to be careful as I basically created a saw blade in the process. Now you can see the idea I have, where it will just sit part way inside of the casing. The test fit was promising, there's plenty of room without any of the optical drives to get in the way. Keep in mind this is just a test PSU, as I hadn't taken apart my actual computer to get the fully modular PSU out of it yet. Here's basically what it looked like. Pretty factory looking when it's all installed, which is the exact look I'm going for. I forgot to get any footage of it, but the second panel that would normally attach to the drive bay needed to be modified by having the backside removed to allow the cables to fit. The most important part of this was to get the Mac power plug working with the new PSU. This involved soldering the leads to an extension cable that I cut down, so I basically made a little extension cable inside of the casing, and I think this will do the trick. One other thing I wanted to address before actually disassembling my computer was the front panel I.O. Due to this proprietary board in the Mac, there weren't many options here to make it work. I opted to break off the USB ports and hot glue some harvested from another case. Yeah, it's not pretty, but it does get the job done and you won't be able to see it once it's assembled. And now it's time to really commit to this and take apart my main computer. I wasn't sure how long it would be before I was finished with this, so I had put this off for as long as possible but I couldn't delay it any longer. I was never really a huge fan of this case. I got it cheap on Amazon when I was looking for a cube shaped case and this is what I ended up with. One feature I actually did like was how it opens up like a car hood, allowing full access to the internals. I made quick work of this and was ready to install the components into their new home. This PC is my main rig, consisting of an AMD Ryzen 1600X, 16 gigs of memory, a GTX 1080, an EVGA 650 watt PSU fully modular, and various SSDs and a one terabyte spindle drive for storage. Now that everything's out, it's time to move them to their new home. The motherboard install is just like any other PC, so nothing special here. Now it was time to figure out if my power supply idea would actually work. I placed it loosely into the case and started routing cables through this small hole in the back. Having modular cables really saved me here, as I don't think this would work if they were attached to the PSU. The 24 pin fit perfect, the link couldn't have been better. The 8 pin almost reached, but I ended up needing an 8 pin extension I had kicking around forever. The GPU and SATA cables were both good length and didn't cause any issues. 
I was very happy with how these came out since I had no chance to test fit them while they were still in my other case. Next, I test fit the drives and their SATA cables. I originally wanted to use the Mac hot swap connectors, but from my research, this would have required a very tedious soldering job or some adapters to convert the SAS connector to SATA. Ultimately, since I don't plan on using the hot swap feature, there was no reason to go through the trouble and I just used normal cables. Here you can see my one terabyte storage drive along with another SSD I used for game storage. My main boot drive is an NVMe drive on the motherboard. I reinstalled the front panel USB board and plugged the cable into the header on the motherboard. Due to the spacing of the board from the case, I was able to route the cable under the board to make it look a little cleaner. The GPU went in with no issues other than the text now being upside down due to the opposite configuration of the Mac Pro. And here we can see how it's looking so far. Not too bad, but there's still a bit of work to go. The next task at hand was to make the power button work. I had a feeling that this button was nothing special and I could make it work with just a little solder. I harvested a power button header from another case and stripped off the ends. I had to figure out which of the three leads to solder to make the button work, so I pulled out the trusty multimeter and pressed the button while listening for a beep. Once I knew the ones I needed, I just soldered the header directly to the pads on the back of the button. One more test to make sure it's working, and it's good to go. I didn't hook up the power LED, but this is something I can hook up later if I want. Next, I wanted to finally get the PSU squared away for good, and I realized I hadn't tested my DIY extension cable. I didn't want to fry my actual power supply, so I grabbed this piece of junk from the garage and hooked it up. It has this power button built into it, so I was able to plug it in and make sure it was working. And thankfully it did work, and I didn't burn my house down. Now that I was pretty sure I wouldn't fry my computer, I wanted to test it and make sure the computer could power on. I plugged it in, and you can see the GPU lights come on, and it's working. For the case fan module, I decided to remove the Mac fan and put in my own. The one at the top will not be hooked up and it's just for looks. I put the CPU fan back on and tested one more time and it's all good. Now the time was finally here to finish the power supply. I swear, every time I try to get it done I get distracted with something else. This was as simple as finding the right screws and putting on the side cover that will hide the power supply behind it. I secured the power supply into the case with these screws that go through the bottom of the shelf and it was finally installed for real. The finishing touch was to put on this other cover. This was a little tricky due to the thin metal and how I cut it, but with a little wiggling, it was good to go. At this point, I had to put the case door on and take a look at how it came out. The CPU fan looks pretty nice with the blue LED. The last thing I needed to tackle was the rear fan and cover. I had been putting this off hoping that my first idea I had would work since I wasn't sure how else to do it. Since the ATX panel I used partly covered the fan opening, I needed to modify the grill to fit by removing a large chunk of it with a saw. I eyeballed a line and got to cutting. Since this is plastic, it cut pretty easy, but it looks like I should have measured twice and cut once. It's not bad, but it came up a little short, leaving a tiny gap where it was cut. All there was left to do was mount a fan to it. I just placed one here to mark where to drill and went at it. This is only held in by two screws at the top, but I'm not worried about anything happening to it.
And there it is. The last thing to do is fire up the computer and make sure it's all working normally. I even hooked up the keyboard to my front panel USB to make sure they were working as expected. Everything booted up fine and it was running great. Man, this old Apple mouse is terrible not having a scroll wheel or right click in Windows. It's not a fun experience. I never expected cooling to be an issue with this case and it seems like I was right. My idle was in the upper 30s, low 40s, same as my other case, and I ran Prime 95 for a bit, and it never broke 60 degrees. So I think it'll be just fine. Wow, so that's it. I'm finally finished. This project was quite a bit more involved than what I expected, despite the research I had done prior to tackling it. This is definitely not a simple mod, and not for the faint of heart. You have to make irreversible modifications to the case, and it's really easy to mess it up at any step of the way. It requires donor parts from other cases, and you need to be able to come up with your own solutions to some of the problems, since everyone seems to do this mod differently. That being said, I'm really happy with how it came out, and it was just like I hoped with the Mac panels providing a nice clean look. I think the paint looks great, and I honestly forgot I even had to do the case repair. It never even bothered me again. I hope you enjoyed this build, and thank you to anyone who watched the previous videos in this series. Please comment down below how you think it came out and let me know if you would have done anything differently. Please stay tuned to the channel, I have many more projects on the way, and I may or may not have gone back to the Goodwill auction site for another computer. That's going to do it for me guys, until next time.